Okay, let's see if our trailer lights are working. Yep, it's not coming on. Okay, we're trying to um, do a hard reboot on the Tesla. Tom, you know the pickup trucks, of course, they have to be able to tow, they have to go off-road, and they have to be able to tow across country. As part of the series, our Adventure X series, we're seeing if pickup trucks, electric ones, are ready for prime time. Now, of course, that's not a pickup, but it's as close as we can get. So now we're about to do what we promised you guys, and that is go overlanding. So where are we going? That's right, so we are going to an expo up in Oregon, which is quite far away, well over a thousand miles away from where we are right now. To get there, we have to get a little bit creative. Yeah, and we're gonna do that by getting an overland trailer from our friends at Boreas Trailers. And we're here at their production facilities, hooking it up to the Tesla so that we can, well, see how much power it's gonna use so that we can pull it all the way to Oregon and back from Colorado. So I think first things first, before we hook it up, let's do a little walk around the trailer and show them what we're gonna be living out of. This is a... Uh, serious off-road rig it uh, it is it'll it'll go wherever you want to take it it'll go farther places than our tesla will take it for sure probably <laughs> yes yep <laughs> show me what makes this you know a really cool rig if you're out there and you want to go off the beaten path right i mean there's tons of these if you want to stay on the highway but what makes this so unique if you want to go off the highway absolutely uh, i think one of the key components of a off-road camper is the uh, multi-axis uh, hitch coupler up front. So we use a brand called Lock and Roll. Um, so you have the other half is on your vehicle side. And what this does is it allows it to rotate on all axes. So it's like a pinion, but a new version of that. <laughs> yes, and a much quieter version. Um, and so you're not gonna pop a ball off out on the trail. Full-size spare tire, uh, seven pin connector on it so that runs your brakes, it runs reverse lights, and it also charges the battery. Yeah, that's interesting because in Colorado you don't really need brakes for something that weighs, what, 2,000 pounds, but you guys do brakes. Right, we do brakes on this one. Um, because this trailer does have a total gross rating of 3,500 pounds, um, we put the 6,000 pound brake system on it. Watch our previous towing with the Tesla video. You know that we have to get a little bit creative when it comes to well, towing with a Model X. And that means pulling out our receiver and hooking it up to the car because of course Tesla can't do anything normal. And for the purpose of aero, you don't have a standard two inch receiver that you would find in any other car. You actually have this little insert that plugs in to the rear end of the vehicle. So I come down here, wah, this goes in here, unlock it like such, and then you should just turn and activate these little splints, right Andre? Yeah, the little balls, and then you can stick it up there. There you go, I think you got it. Is it untwisted back? There we go. We are in business, Andre. Just like that. And it's locked, so nobody can actually walk away with it. Yeah, so I've got the little lock here, so now the actual, well it's the receiver, right? It's yes. securely placed into the vehicle. Just like that. So this is the lock and roll riser kit. Um, works good in situations when you don't yeah. have the yeah, so kind of your average vehicle. Unless we find a supercharger that's trailer friendly, I figure we're going to have to hook and unhitch this probably about 10 times before we get to Oregon. So I'm going to get good at this. <laughs> yes, and it's actually a really straightforward system. The trailer is also really easy to move around. Yeah, it's nice. These caster With wheels. With the caster really, yeah, on there, yeah, really make you know, it. one person can move it. So basically just lower it into place? Just lower it in. Let's see if it, it might be, well, you can probably turn it, right? Plug this guy in. Put our chains on. They're not going to reach. We're going to have to have chain extent. Andre? Yeah, we're not going to reach. We're, we're going to need um, chain extenders. So we, we ran into a problem here. Uh, these chains aren't just long enough. Uh, part of the problem is, of course, the Tesla receiver for the chain is way under there. 
and we're pretty short. So we need basically just a longer chain. We have to figure that out. Well, you know, there's always a little bit of adventure when you're doing something new. Yes, and this is just the start. And guys, maybe you're wondering why Andre's here. Uh, that's a really good question because, so um, we're doing kind of a tag team on this first overlanding trip with the Tesla. So yeah. I am driving it with Tommy to Oregon and then Andre is actually going to the expo. Mm -hmm. And I think it's appropriate that for the first trip we're not doing much off-roading because let's face it, we haven't had much luck with this beast off-roading yet and we, we still have our street tires. Go, go, go to my, yep. Slow, slow, slow. Barely gonna clear it. But we still need to know how much energy we're gonna use with a trailer. Yeah, exactly. In order to plan our trip. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, right? So it's over a thousand miles to go to Oregon from here. Yes. And it's gonna take us, normally, Google Maps said it would take about, what, 17 hours to do that if this was a traditional car. But because we have to stop and recharge, it might take up to 24 hours. So we're gonna be adding yes. at least five to seven hours worth of additional charge times uh, yeah. yeah charge times and we don't know yet how much more energy that trailer uses we know that the horse trailer basically cuts down this vehicle's range to a third right to yes. about 100 miles yes. it says that we have 32 miles remaining and that the, the, the screen says 94 i'm going to go out this because we are burning way faster than what the screen is showing Dude, this guy is really tiny <laughs> or the car has a super big yeah low seat look 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 look, look, look it's just a head <laughs> you see that? It's, just a, it's just a head driving an old MG. That's really, uh, that car was made for him. All right, we came to our local auto parts store and we got the C-clamp. Perfect, that's, that's perfect. perfect. That's good. Yeah, let's do it, perfect, thank you. So we got a little C-clamp uh, and then we'll just uh, basically take this chain and C-clamp it to the other one and we'll be legal and safe and good to tow. And, Good to find out exactly how much energy the Tesla's going to use. I'm hoping it cuts it by half. That would be really good. So we could have a range of over 150 miles, but we'll see. Let's go hook it up. Yeah. This is super easy. All right, breakaway cable attached. Yep, wiring's attached. But worryingly, so you got horses in the back? No, we get no horses. Okay, let's see if our trailer lights are working. Yep, it's not coming on. Okay, we're trying to um, do a hard reboot on the Tesla. Okay, we're in. What if we hook up a brake controller? So the brake controller sees the trailer because we get the little C connected. But we still don't have trailer lights, which is interesting. Yeah, it's All right, well, next thing, Google. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's gotta be Google. It's gotta be Googleable. Let's see if we have a problem here. Okay, so it's worth checking the fuse. So it's F105. Should be 15 amp right there. Pull it up here. Looks to be fine. See that? So it's not the fuse. So Tommy, um, I found some information here that says that uh, somebody else had an issue similar to this with a Tesla Model X. Okay. And the problem is that the lights, the LED lights on the trailer, don't draw enough power for the car to recognize it, actually. Gotcha. Yep. There's this adapter that we can get to help us. So we have to get in a little adapter? Yes. Can we get that? Yes. Is it doable? Well, so we should kind of explain the issue. So what we think the issue is, is because the trailer draws so little power from the actual vehicle, we think that the car doesn't even recognize it because the LED lights, they just don't use any oomph, right? Yep. So we're essentially getting something to plug into the car that, <laughs> that forces it to use more power <laughs> to recognize the trailer, which is exactly what you want when you have an electric car with only a limited amount of range. <laughs>
<laughs> it's okay, we'll do the trick. But the good news is the uh, brake controller works. <laughs> yes. Andre, why do you think that we were able to use um, a trailer in the past? Like the, the horse, horse trailer. trailer. I, I think it was a lot larger trailer and it had like, I don't know, two dozen lights on it. So, so maybe he was able to detect so, that draw. Yeah, so this trailer is much smaller and about four lights on it. The other thing that's weird is this uh, trailer actually trickle charges from the vehicle. Yes. <laughs> so Drawing more energy <laughs> from it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh but, boy. But we won't have to do it because the battery, the trailer is fully charged. So at least that's okay. Let's get the adapter. Do, 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 do. Okay, so here it is. So this plugs into our seven way, and then that is also yet another seven way. But hopefully, what this is going to do is draw more power and allow the vehicle to recognize the trailer. So, 26, 27 bucks well spent. Hopefully, fingers crossed. What else do we need to tow with the Tesla? Andre, let's hope nothing. What else are we missing here, huh? We got chain extensions. Yeah. We've got light connector. Yeah. And uh, we got the hitch, correct hitch. You know what we're missing? What? what? A buddy in a Land Cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm inserting my dongle. Go ahead, Tommy. Okay. Uh, I need another inch. Got it. Yes. It works! It works! Victory! Wow. <laughs> well, look at that. What a pickle. Yeah. I gotta tell you guys, towing in the future kind of sucks actually, doesn't it? It's okay, a... we finally figured it out. We you... got it. Yeah, it looks like everything works. Those are running lights. All right, let's, let's, let's figure out how much range we got. Yeah, let's go. Let's go look it up. Yeah. So, car sees the trailer, trailer is connected, security chains are connected, breakaway is connected. Uh, we're ready to tow. Let's go, gentlemen. Oh, hey, look. We can monitor our connection. Good. So now, for what we actually came here for, right? Yes. Which is to figure out just how much power we're gonna use. So we started with 240 miles of range. We're down to 180. So we get on the highway, yep. then we have to drive for, let's do 15 miles at 65 miles an hour. And let's explain why we're doing this. So we're using something called a better route planner. And this is not sponsored by them. This is just a cool application online that allows you with the Tesla product, for example, to find a destination, find a route for that destination, and then program a bunch of settings that will predict how many times you have to stop, how long you have to charge up for each stop, um, you know, all these different data points that allow you to plan your route. Now, Tesla actually has a route planner as well, but on the Tesla route planner, you can't really go in and play with the settings. So you can select the vehicle, select the destination, and then it will tell you where to stop and for how long. But with a better route planner, what we can do is do the same thing but also factor in our trailer but in order to factor in our trailer we have to figure out what our energy usage will be at 65 miles an hour so we're going to run a little test to get back and i also love the fact that we have the air suspension so the vehicle is nice and level that's a nice touch all right so here comes our range test we're pulling onto the highway what's the 65 andre yep 65. Yeah, 65 cruise control when you get on the highway and then we'll see the consumption we have several ways of doing it 30, 15 mile, and 5 mile increments. There we go, 65 set. We got it set. So what we are hoping to see is something under 500 watt hours per mile. That's basically the amount of energy per mile went. So if it's over 500, then we start getting into a high consumption. So it figures a Tesla Model X 2019 long range 100D, which is what this is, will have a 386 watt hour per mile reference consumption at 65 but because we're towing we have to up that which is then going to change the route planning okay so we've been tracking our consumption on this stretch of highway and it's been you know 
it's been a, a good amount of uphill, but also some downhill. And over the last five to 10 miles, we've been averaging between 515 and about 530 watt hours per mile. So let's go back to the office, plug that into the computer and see what our trip is gonna be like. Right now we're at 522, 521 watt hours per mile. That's our average over the last 15 miles. You know, on a highway going about 65. And then here we have our toolbox. This also houses um, our 100 amp hour AGM battery um, along with our solar charge controller here. You can see we got the fridge set at 30 degrees in the sun. We're fully charged at 14.1 volts. Yeah, and how are you charging it? I think there's some solar panels right up here. Yep, right? this is our 100 watt solar panel right here. Um, the vehicle will also charge off the, the tow vehicle uh, and it does have shore power. So you can plug it in while it's stored or at a campground. And then we've got some- A little bear protection. <laughs> bear, <laughs> stake driver, whatever it uh, might need to be. We've got the room enclosure for the awning and some accoutrements in there for your guys' trip. Okay. Um, and then moving back, um, we have a fully welded aluminum exoskeleton. Uh, and this is how we install our composite panels. Uh, there is not one sliver of wood used in this camper. It's either a metal or a composite. It keeps the, the weight down while being much stronger than a, than a, a, a wood or timber product. Um, and it's also, the this one has some scratches in it, it is the demo unit. You can buff these scratches out, whereas an aluminum trailer, you wouldn't be able to. So inside here, a uh, queen size mattress. It's a four and a half inch memory foam. We have it custom made for the camper. Uh, all of our LED lights run on a dimmer switch here. You have your uh, shore power plug-ins there, your thermostat for the forced air furnace, uh, USB plug-ins, battery gauge, 12 volt plug. Um, this is your master kill switch, and then your 12 volt uh, converter there. Uh, and again, everything in here, there's no wood. Even this maple is actually an FRP with a maple print on it. Um, bunch of storage, forced air furnace in here, 6,500 BTUs. So you can turn this thing into a rolling sauna if you'd like. Um, again, more storage here. And then you have a, fan, yeah. yep, you have overhead fan here. Um, so you have uh, this is a max air fan. The reason we go with max air is it is the quietest one on the market, which is very important in this size of a space. It also has a hood on it, so it can be open during rain or snow or any inclement weather. Um, has 10 speeds, it has reverse as well, so it moves a lot of air in here. Um, plus everything in here, the camper is fully insulated. All four walls, ceiling, and floor. Right, so uh, over here, shore power, I take it, right? Yep, so this is your shore power. It's just a standard extension cord. Um, it also operates as a battery tender. Um, so you're ready to park this thing for the winter. You plug it in, it'll tend that battery all winter. You don't have to, That's great. You don't have to pull the battery out like the boat, right? Um, here is your water fill. This is 20 gallons of fresh water on board. Uh, that's mounted underneath the camper and it's centered on the axle line so that it doesn't affect your, your tongue weight, whether you're empty or full. Um, what kind of suspension do we have? So this has the Timberin Independent, uh, it's the 3,500 pound HD. Um, and so that is a true swing arm suspension kit. Uh, has over seven inches of travel on it. Um, so you have kind of your leaf spring and your, and your torsion style suspension. And then here's Timbrin, way in a whole nother category of itself. I tell people sometimes the toughest road, most abusive road I've been on this year has been the potholes on I-70. And you hit a pothole at 70 miles an hour, that really rocks your camper. And these do a great job of absorbing that. Do you have to grease your bearings? Yep, we, you want to grease them. Uh, and then, you know, you're looking at getting them fully repacked every 12,000 miles or so. Okay. Um, so come, once a year you grease them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How much, how much? Yep. Um, but the, the Timberin is the way to go. Um, and I tell people, you don't have to be a hardcore rock crawler to appreciate it. It's, it's an investment into your product. Um, okay. And up here we have up here, awning. And I think we're going to put a rooftop tent on it so we can get two of us on here. Yep, you can put rooftop tents on our uh, you stand, rack. You stand on the roof? 
Uh, you can't stand on the roof, but you can stand on the roof rack. Okay. So um, you can stand here. Yes. Here, right where the where the cross member is, but you don't want to stand there. Correct. Okay. Yep. The uh, the roof rack is rated to 500 pounds with two crossbars. Yep. If you add two more, it's rated to 650. Okay. And that roof rack is actually welded to the structure of the camper, so we're not point loading. We're not drilling holes in your roof. I also noticed you have lights all around, which is nice. Yep. You got uh, side lights on each side. Yep. Um, for the late night hangouts. And then these are your little marker lights. Side marker lights. Um, we do all uh, custom fenders on these. You can stand on them, no problem. Um, you can also remove them if you damage them in a, in a trail incident. Uh, How wide is it? It's seven feet wide, uh, fender to fender. The, the box is 60 inches wide. All right, let's talk about the kitchen. That's the cool yes. part. Let's, let's, let's see what you got. Yeah, so kind of the crown jewel back here. Um, so again, no wood products in the trailer. Uh, an all stainless steel kitchen, which um, this kitchen is still nicer than the one I have in my house. Uh, so two burner stove, uh, on-demand water here, uh, stainless steel sink, stainless steel stove. Uh, next to it, you have the Dometic refrigerator here. Again, on these are all AccuRide slides. Um, they're rated to 500 pounds a piece. They lock in and out, um, so they're not, you know, bouncing around. Yep. Um, so plenty of storage in here. It's cold. It's cold. Yeah, you got ready, ready for some. Uh, I'm gonna go with bologna, Andre. Bologna. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it's cold here at 32 degrees, and we still have a fully charged battery. We're at. 13.8 just running off the solar. And then over here are storage compartments? Yep, so this is your storage. Uh, we've got some things in here set up for you guys. Thank you. That's uh, kind of like we just got a ba real basic kit, but it'll get you going. Nice. Uh, so plenty of storage, fits a 12 inch saucepan. Um, and then uh, again, you have shore power here when you're plugged in, uh, all LED lights on a dimmer, and then switch for your water pump and then some USB plug-ins, and you have an additional floodlight overhead for the late night cookouts. Does this uh, just turn on when you open up the... <clears throat> yep, so it can be run with the dimmers or without. Gotcha. It's pretty bright, so you don't always need it, but um, yeah, this is a real slick kitchen system. Um, of course, you know, before you go to bed, you want to take a shower, you've also thought of that, right? Yes, um, so we have on-demand hot water. Again, this is Everything you've seen here is standard equipment. Um, so this runs off your 20 gallon uh, fresh water and the water pump. Uh, you set your settings, turn the shower head on, and you have hot water. Um, so it works. How long will 20 gallons last? It depends, you know, it's... Um, With this edge. It, it works good because this is on demand. So you're, you can turn it on or off. Are you gonna take a 10 minute Hot shower, probably not. Is it gonna be more in that Navy shower category? Yes, um, but it also works great. You can fill the sink with hot water for dishes at night as well. Okay, um, right. uh, and then of course your propane. Yep, 11 pounds of propane. Um, all of our propane uh, equipment is super high efficient. Uh, for example, this tank alone will run the furnace for 35 hours straight. Um, so typically, even with my camping, almost an entire summer just on that single tank. And if somebody wants one of these, how much is it gonna, is it gonna run? So these, uh, this camper as it sits right here yep. uh, is coming in at about 27,500. Mm -hmm. um, it will vary a little bit from dealer to dealer depending on you know, where you're going in the nation to, to get it. Um, but, and they're available in stock at all six of our dealerships. And where are those at? Um, so we where have, you yeah, where, where, yeah so country? We, have, uh, we have Denver, yep. we have Phoenix, Houston, Alabama, Iowa, and Montana. So there you go. If you live in any of those places, you're in luck. If not, you have to take a little bit of a ride. Yep, yep. And it, you know, it's a good excuse for a road trip if you need to come get one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what kind of warranty do you provide? So all the campers come with a two-year warranty. Um, things like the solar panel, they come with their own 25-year warranty. Um, so yeah, and we, we stand behind our work. So what's the farthest somebody's taken one of these? I had probably the most recent customer, we had a full timer. Um, him, his wife, and a dog all camping in this trailer. In six months, they put on 30,000 miles. Whoa. 
<laughs> so that's that's a lot. That's a, that's a lot. So and we, uh, we packed the bearings three times. Yeah, ab absolutely. They did have some preventative maintenance on it. Um, but we've got, uh, we're at about 125 campers on the road. We are back in our offices here in Boulder, Colorado, and we're gonna plan a route to Portland, Oregon. So I wanna show you how it works. So it tells you how long it's gonna take, how long you need to stop at every supercharger, and what the total trip is gonna look like. And this is what it would be like not towing. And it looks like we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 supercharging stops if we don't tow there for a total trip duration of 23 hours and 31 minutes, and that includes four hours and three minutes of charging. But of course, we're towing our Boreas camper. So what's that trip gonna look like? Well, the reason we needed a reference consumption is so I can plug it in into this app, and then we can see pretty close to what our actual trip is gonna look like. So I'm gonna plug in the numbers 540 watt hours per mile, which is about what we found on the highway. It was closer to like 515, but I'm also adding f a little bit more as a buffer as well as for the rooftop tents. So if I do plan routes, so it's gonna take a total of 27 hours and 32 minutes, total charge time of seven hours and 31 minutes. And if we look here, we're gonna have to supercharge actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. So one more time than we would if we just went there not towing. But what's cool is actually, you can see on the screen here, there's a stretch in red on the map, and that's because between Tremonton, Utah, and Twin Falls, Idaho, we've got a 148 mile stretch, and if we're gonna make it, we have to drive at a maximum of 63 miles per hour. So it actually tells you max speeds you have to reach um, in order to make it to the supercharger. This is of course towing. Now I do have a minimum um, charge level of 15%, so the program won't allow, in theory, the car to go below 15% just because that makes it stressful. But in, essentially we've got an additional three and a half hours of charging because we're towing, uh, which adds about three and a half hours to our total trip time. So it's gonna be quite the adventure and I'm glad you're tuning in for this. We're using this Yakima rooftop tent, but before we can put it on top of the trailer, I have to unfold it and readjust the mounting brackets. So let's get going. All right, so finally we can actually remove the mattress, and then uh, we need to move the mounting brackets from going this way to going this way. So uh, let's get that done. After some doing, we got these brackets mounted in the right orientation. So now all we have to do is close this back up and put it on top of the trailer. With some help, we got the tent on the roof and now I just have to tighten the bolts because we got the tent centered and uh, also tighten the clamps. So first it's Allen wrench time for these bolts. Then tightening the clamp. All right, pretty nice bed. Ready to go. All right, the trailer is set up. The rooftop tent is mounted. We know approximately how much energy the Tesla is using with the trailer but the big challenge is still coming up next time because it's time for Roman and Tommy to go from Denver, Colorado to Portland, Oregon, approximately with this trailer and the Adventure X Tesla coming up next time on Adventure X series. And go back to tflcar.com for my news views on the real world electric adventure reviews.